Hello everybody, today I'm opening up another Powerful Packs premiere box. It's super heavy and I'm really excited to see what's inside. <laughs> Maggots. Oh, and check a link in the description. I'm gonna be forwarding this box to one of you guys um, in a giveaway, so check that out if you're interested. I'll have a link to the rules and everything down there. This is jam-packed. Yikes. Okay, well, the first thing in here is, uh, I don't know. Oh, here, I found the English. <laughs> okay, it's two sketching crayons in white. Also in the box, I see a Derwent Charcoal Green Moss Pencil. The Primo Euro Blend Charcoal Pencil Kit with a sharpener, a black eraser, a white charcoal pencil, three, which I assume, okay, one's HB, one's B, and one's 3B. I think I know what the theme of this box is. <laughs> is this more pencils? Hey, what is this? The Clutch Pencil Set. Oh, there it is. It's on the other side. It's upside down. Oh, it comes in a little tin. Nice. There it is. Jesus, pencil comes with instructions. To sharpen, twist, to load, click. I think. Make sure I don't lose that. <laughs> There's a kneaded eraser. Oh, it's a nice squishy one. Oh, but it looks kind of sticky. Oh, oh dear. Got back in there for now. And then this crazy pencil. Oh, it's heavy. So I believe this is the lead holder. And then these are the leads. I think all three of them are 2B, so they're all the same. So you just stick one. Oh, here we go. Okay, I figured it out. Uh, nope, maybe not. One second here. Technical difficulties to load. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh! Okay, that's actually really <laughs> oh, Ready? So it like opens and expands. And you stick your lead in there. And then you let go of it and it closes tightly. See that? Oh, wow. And then to sharpen, you're supposed to twist this and then turn this over and it should be a sharpener. Yeah, interesting. I think right now my pencil's sharp enough. Don't need to worry about that. There's a lot of stuff in here. What is this? That's the biggest blending stump. And another kneaded eraser. Woo! So this is the Art Alternative Drawing Tool Set. It's nine pieces. There's something metal in there. Weird cardboardy things, some blending stumps. It looks like a cloth and a kneaded eraser. I don't know how you use some of these things. These are all new to me. Like what is, what is this? So we have two blending stumps. Then these I think are called tortillions. There are, or they're maybe they're blending stumps too, but they're just like paper that's been wrapped around to a point. This looks like some kind of cloth. Maybe you use it to smudge things. That's what that looks like. I know what this is. This is a kneaded eraser. I can tell you this is the kind that I like. I've noticed, quick tip here. <laughs> My favorite kneaded erasers are the ones that usually come from the less expensive brands. Yes, love it. Okay. <laughs> this, I actually have no idea what it is, but it's like some sand, oh, that's sandpaper. <laughs> so it's like, a bunch of layers of sandpaper stippled to this uh, MDF. Maybe you can use it to sand your drawings. I don't know when that would be necessary. <laughs> and then lastly, there's this little thin, is that aluminum? Do they have a name for this? It's an erasing shield. Ooh. So I assume you use this so that you can erase a small section without touching your hand to like the rest of the drawing maybe, or so you can get like a specific shape. That's everything in there. That's the nine piece drawing tool set. All right, here we have some vine charcoal, whatever that is. Oh, okay. So there's like little crunchy, do you hear that? You hear that crunch? They're like little tiny sticks of charcoal. This is gonna be a mess. I can already, like, I've already got lead on my hands. <laughs> we haven't even started using any of this stuff yet. Okay. And then lastly, it looks like there's a big chunk of paper in here. There's the menu, of course, listing all the supplies. B paper, it's a nine by 12, 70 pound, brown recycled sketch paper. Look how much is in there. <laughs> along with the confetti. It looks like Steve from Stranger Things for some reason. 100% recycled brown tone. That looks like that paper that comes in like Amazon boxes. This is actually gonna be really, really fun because we have like dark colors and then we also have light colors. And when you have a mid-known paper, you can draw with both light tones and dark tones. This is gonna be exciting. Okay. 
First thing I want to test out is this. It's kind of funny that we got two kneaded erasers, but let's try out this pencil holder with a chunk of lead. So these Primo charcoal pencils, they're kind of like some other pencils I've used in the past, um, where when you draw with them, it feels like you're drawing with dirt. Like the texture is just so fun. I can't, I can't even explain it really. You just feel the grip. Wowzers. Okay, this one doesn't feel quite as chalky, but look at that pigment. Mmm, gorgeous. Nice diarrhea green, or I guess green moss color. Ooh, we didn't try these uh, white crayons. Should probably use the broken one. Whoa. Precision smudging level 100. Nice. And you have your blending stump. And I think this is the chamois or chamois or something. Well, that really helps you blend out to like nothing. That's actually kind of cool. So it's kind of like smudging it with your finger. Then there's the, what is this? Sandpaper pointer? How does one use this? Oh, I can feel people laughing at me right now. How to use a sandpaper pointer. Here's a matching video. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you use this to sharpen like a pastel or crayon or something like this or you can also use it to clean an eraser so like if this eraser had a bunch of white on it you could do that hey thanks google hey more importantly thank you e how arts and crafts <laughs> but this thing i assume you like Let's see we get a perfect circle ready the review <laughs> Hey, okay, see if that worked better. Not sure when you would need this, but good to know it's in our arsenal, right? <laughs> so these are all the art supplies in the January Premiere Powerful Pack box. Now that I've tested them all out and I kind of have a feel of how they all work, now it's time to try and create an illustration with them. But before I dive in and obviously make an illustration, and I'm going to need to have to come up with an idea. And the way I do that is by using thumbnails. I'm gonna start with, um, this thing because it's just what I'm fascinated by <laughs> and it's most like a pencil so I think it'll be the easiest to erase because it is just a 2b pencil and I just sort of start sketching it's very important in the beginning stages not to like worry about making anything perfect or even worry about having the perfect idea because you just want to draw and eventually a mistake might lead you in the right direction so in that way there really is no way of making a mistake for some reason I'm getting ballerina vibes, like a sad, sad, teary-eyed ballerina. Since we have a lot of dark tones, I'm really trying to focus on using those, even in this really simple thumbnail. Not a very graceful ballerina. <laughs> Here's another little tip for you. <laughs> if you're having trouble with like anatomy or the muscles, go on Pinterest and search ballerina action shots or you know, ballerina warm ups, and you'll get a ton of really good references for sketching and learning that anatomy. Again, we have a very limited color palette, so I'm trying to take that into account. It's a little bit of glare. That's what it looks like for me. <laughs> Is that better? Yay, nay. Let me know. Ooh, if we did like a figure skater, then we could play with like the white for snow. Let me blend that out. See what that looks like. You know, again, we're still just playing with the supplies. And so I honestly have the most fun when I'm just drawing little doodles and I don't know, playing with supplies and making a mess. <laughs> don't think it has to be a masterpiece. Just have fun with it. Ooh, I really like the way that looks. It's like fog. Ooh. What if there's like a beam of light hitting her? So then we fill that in. Interesting. Let me try that. And just pull away from it. I also can't forget that we have this green moss color. I have to remember that. I keep forgetting.
trying to race her here. Race some stuff. <laughs> That's what you do with an eraser, isn't it? Yeah, throw some white in here somewhere. I'm just continuing to play around with this. It's kind of feeling a little bit more like paint than I expected because you sort of like put down your colors and then you sort of blob it out with this puppy. <laughs> and then you get a nice even blending between the two colors. And then, you know, it starts to look like that. <laughs> where you think there should be more light hitting it. Yeah, the pencil, and then so you just blend out the edges a bit to tone it down. You add some highlight to the knee and like the thigh, and you blend that out. And try to erase around the edges, clean it up a bit. Sure, ballerina would never have their hands spread out like that, but I think it looks kind of cool. <laughs> now, this ended up being a ballerina again, <laughs> even though it's kind of in a figure skater pose, so I'm kind of good thinking. Darker as it goes underneath her body there. You can blend some of those, so it's a bit more of a gradient. So I always start with, you know, testing out the supplies like that. But that can only take you so far. When you start actually drawing something with it, that's when you start getting a feel for how these tools interact with each other and how you can use them to get different effects. And uh, yeah, so this was a lot more fun way of doing basically this exact same thing. I keep forgetting to use the green. Let me try one last thing here before I move on to the full size drawing. It's giving me a really like retro Hollywood glam vibe, the black and white. <laughs> so I just want to try something. Oh, there we go. I got that out of my system. <laughs> Still, didn't use the green. <gasps> so messy. This is why I was a digital artist for the longest time because I just, Oh, it goes all the way down my arm. I just... Good grief. All right, let's do this. Got like the head, eyes would be here, like a nose and an arm, maybe. <laughs> nice long swan neck, like it's Swan Lake. Maybe we'll add some feathers for more swanness. Now, armpits, I find tremendously difficult. <laughs> There's just so much weird flesh huddled about, you know? This really big chunk of lead is making it easy for me to be really loose and like not worry too much about the details because you really can't draw details when your pen is this thick. So <laughs> that's actually being very helpful. Does that part come down there like that or like... She probably should be wearing some kind of clothes, eh? Move this ear over, that might help. I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't leave enough space for the hand because I was kind of excited about drawing that, like, you know, the hand. <laughs> Alright, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is go with highlights because they'll seem to just disappear. So it seems like a good thing to start with. Try and figure out where all the brightest points will be. Maybe the feathers will be all white. We don't have to be super detailed about this because most of the detail comes from the charcoal. At least that's been my experience. So, like the black charcoal is what I'm trying to say. Something like that. All right, next I want to add the darkest tones. Fill in anything that should be very, very dark. Like the nostrils. It's not gonna be a lot of light in there. Unless she's at the doctor's or something. <laughs> Blend out some of the places where I put a little too much, you know? I know I said I wanted a long neck, but I think I drew too long of a neck, you know? <laughs> Probably. 
And some places need to be even darker than that. But I can blend out like the edges of them. I might fill in her whole outfit white. Blend, blend, blend. Blend, blend, blend. Blend, blend, blend. Like that. And then blend it out. Is that the right side? Yeah, that's the right side. I've got one side that I'm using for the darker and one side that I'm using for the lighter that I had used for the darker earlier, but I had to like clean it. So I want to be very careful because it's a very difficult thing to do. <laughs> Ooh, that looks like a bionic arm. <laughs> Might have went a little overboard. But that's okay, we have an eraser. Let's erase some of the parts that need to be a little lighter, but not quite, you know, fully white. And then we could probably blend that again. We could probably use green maybe shade a bit back here. And that might pull away from the bionic arm look. Or it might make it work. Not seeing much of a difference actually. Let's try add some here. See what that does. All right, now this arm, which I accidentally left for last, that's way up there, so I'm gonna end up smudging everything, but we'll be careful, we'll, we'll be careful. So let's see, there'd probably be some shadows here-ish, and this area, and then I'm trying to be really light on it because I went a little overboard in some of the other places, so hopefully I didn't do that again. Because I want a lot of the toned paper to show through, and I think that'll help stay away from that metallic look that we had. Need a little down here. Smudgeroony. Need to blend this. Oh, that's green. I want the black. Blend. Where's my blending stick? I'll try and make the toned paper show through in some areas here instead of the white and that should help with the metal look. Let's try and shade the face a little more here. A little under eye shadow. A little under the lips. I'm just kind of using whatever's left over on this blending stump for good enough. Oh, I can also color in like the eyes. Why? There's just so much stuff everywhere. I'm gonna blend out the bottom half of the feather like that so there's a little bit of something something and then I'm gonna grab the white charcoal pencil sharpen it so I have a point and then add some uh, extra feather texture with that Ooh, that looks kind of cool actually I might do that on both sides so sort of like feather textures so that the suit her outfit doesn't look so simple like maybe there's more going on that meets the eye. All right, I'm feeling a really strong urge to fill the whole thing in with the black charcoal. Maybe at least around here because over here we have the dark hair. Let's just see what happens, you know? Where's the softest lead here? Oh boy. Add a first layer down, figure out where I want it. Give it a little quick blend. Yeah, let's try and add some more over on this side though. Even it out. And then what I wanted to do was take like the white pencil and outline some of the things that kind of get lost. Maybe she's got some glitter on her face too. Which means it gets everywhere. <laughs> you can blend a couple of these so they're not quite as like obvious. You can actually use the green shade the white. Hey! It's a little less harsh, you know, than the black. And then I can actually probably draw some more feather textures on that. There we go. What do you think? What's your opinion? <laughs> trying to think if there's anything else I can do. There we go. I'm liking that. Got a little highlight underneath the chin here. Or cheek. There we go. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. I think what I really like about it is that it's an art supply that's kind of difficult to get details. So when I say that, it means that I can just sort of play around with it and 
I can really work on like my shading and like trying to get that sort of muscle tone, which I think this may be the best armpit I've ever drawn. So yay. <laughs> and I love how you can work on tones, like the light colors and the dark colors and then the mid tone and see where those work well together. And like how I was getting that like metallic -y texture on this arm over here, I was learning that was because I had very different darks to lights, like there was no mid-tones in there. And then when I introduced the mid-tones, it started looking a little bit more like flesh. So I'm learning a lot of things here and I really enjoyed using these art supplies. I wanna thank Palful for sending me this box um, for free to try out and to share with you. And now I'd really like to pass it on to one of you I'll clean it up first, obviously, but <laughs> if you'd like to enter the giveaway to win this exact box, um, I'll have a link in the description where you can uh, do just that. And you too can be dismissly. Woo! Doesn't that sound like fun? <laughs> you can fill the rest of these pages. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye! Now it's time to clean up. Oh, I forgot about these.